Hey folks, this is Rob. And I'm Nathan. And we are Two, Two Guys in a Ride. And oh my gosh, Nathan, we are here yeah. with some fantastic folks. And today we are at Idle Ridge in uh, right outside of St. Cloud, Minnesota. And we are with Jim and Brenda. And they're gonna share with us some of their fantastic collection of memorabilia, gas pumps. Uh, we've got a cool boat, we've got a terraplane, we've got a Dodge Coronet, we've got a Corvette. And I'd say something, but and Rob I'm not letting him because I'm so excited. <laughs> but folks, it's we, fantastic. You're going to love it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going on and on because I'm so excited. But just keep watching and I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. Yes, you uh, are. Take a moment, hit that red subscribe button to subscribe to our channel so you never miss uh, a video. And hit that bell notification. And if you like what you see, give us a like, give us a thumbs up, and leave some comments down below if you'd like to see more so what do you say folks Nathan let's, let's take a ride all right Okay. With the car flat six in it that had no power. Okay. And I just love that line of those old trannies. Yes, yes. That is, it's an old car. Hey folks, it's Rob with two guys in a ride and boy oh boy do we have a video for you today. With me I've got Jim and in front of, uh, or uh, we're both in front of his beautiful 1937 Hudson Terraplane. And Jim, you want to give us a little bit of history about yourself and about your car and how you came to own this car and why? What does it mean to you? Well, here's the funny part. Um, I was a workaholic. I was up at 4.30 every morning, never took a vacation, never made a baby, and worked all the time. And, but I always would peak at Hemmings. And all of a sudden, and I always wanted a 37 Hudson Terraplane Business School. 
And lo and behold, here's one. Well, it's out in Rock Tavern, New York. And I had a hard time going to the bathroom when I was working. Okay. So there was no way. And so I said, well, forget that. Looked the next month and it was still there. At a weak moment sitting at my desk, I called the number. Rock Tavern, New York. And a guy answers the phone. And we talked for a while and I said, say, I said, your voice sounds familiar, but I don't travel or go anywhere. Do I know you? And the guy starts chuckling. And he said, I'm Paul Tuttle Jr. I said, from Orange County Choppers? And he, he starts laughing. He said, yeah, that's me. And so <laughs> we wrangled on the phone for a while. Okay. We agreed on a price. And of course, they had to ship the car. Okay. So we agreed on a price, FOB St. Cloud, drove it right to my office the one-ton dually with New York plates and crew cab and the guys jumped out and it was some more guys from the show and they delivered the car. Is it? Oh wow. And okay. so then um, I drove the car and I called Paul right back. Yeah. And I said, Paul, I said, I love the restoration. I'm a purist, the original color, the original fabric. I said, I love the car, but I said, you screwed me. <gasps> he says, what do you mean? Well, I said, Paul, I said, I'm a mechanical guy. And I said, it's so loaded up with oil, it barely starts, so I can't shift it, and it won't stop. Well, don't worry about it. You know, that car was restored, and it sat a while. He said, just drive it. And I said, no, Paul. I said, I know him better than that. Okay. So I said, we're going to have a test of integrity. I said, I'll make the car right. And then I'll call you up with a number. And then I said, you can give me all summer none. And he wasn't very happy with that, but we parted ways on the phone. Okay. Well, then I went into complete heart failure and I died. So the car sat there for a year and a half while I was convalescing. And so finally I got back feeling better. So I drove the car and the motor went out. So I pulled the, <clears throat> I pulled the, pulled the complete drivetrain went through the clutch, went through the transmission. Here they had the wrong rings in it. And they, with a, with a restoration of that degree, and they never did the brakes. And we all know what wheel cylinders look like when they're all froze up. Mm -hmm. Well, the reason why I couldn't stop it is because there was one shoe stopping out of eight. Oh my gosh. So I put a whole brake job in it. Okay. And when I got it all done, I looked up my honey and I said, you know, now I'm embarrassed to call him this late because he'll think I'm a moron. <laughs> but if he ever sees this video, um, now he'll know the rest of the story. Now, Paul, you know the story now, as, as we say, the rest of the story. So uh... <laughs> Didn't Paul Harvey say that? He did. I he sure did. <laughs> so anyway, um, Paul, if you're listening, I need some green. <laughs> well, tell me this. So it's a beautiful car, but why? What does it mean to you? Why did you want a Hudson Terraplane of all the cars that are out there? Well, because uh, I was always excited about the line and the okay. and um, and all the features of the car and how art deco it is okay. and how cool the grill is yeah. and of course back in the day they nicknamed them the anteater but um, and again I'm a purist I can appreciate the hot rods and everything right. and I can appreciate the craftsmanship but it just doesn't happen to me be my cup of tea right yeah. right now you're saying too this is the business coupe what does what is a business coupe well, actually, what a business coupe was, of course, no back seat and a huge trunk because everything was door to door back in the day. Okay. Everything from Encyclopedia Britannica to brushes to a fuller kitchen. Fuller brush, yeah. Fuller, fuller brush, brush guys, right. And, um, and then appliance. Um, vacuum cleaners. Vacuum cleaners. And what was so cool back in the day right. is they had salesman samples. Okay. And it was a miniature one of what they were selling, okay. but they were so correct. Right. And um, like, for example, the woman that was on the farm that fantasized about a regular cook stove. Right. And so then they had a salesman sample, and he'd pull that out of his trunk, <clears throat> and he would go in and sit at the kitchen table. And then he would demonstrate all the features, oh. and then they'd buy the, um, they'd go to work and they'd buy the, 
by the stove. Right, and, and we've got the pictures of that because the trunk, and again, with no back seat, you've got plenty of in storage inside as well, but the trunk is cavernous. I mean, you almost have to lay down to reach back in there, and we've, we've got the pictures to show you that, but they could fit a, 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 a quarter scale or whatever size stove or a whole set of encyclopedias or whatever. Well, and then, of course, and, and then of course, if it was smaller goods, they actually hauled the goods with them. Like where they could sell it right on the okay. And they could, you know, if they could get the woman to bite on the hook real quick, right. then they could make delivery right away. Right. But if it was a stove or something, then of course it had to be shipped right. and so on and so forth. Right. But um, you got to remember, everything was on the road and everything was door to door. And so I think these salesmen set out, maybe they did a whole state and maybe they stayed on the road for days. Right. And um, they would peddle their wares and make their money. But the 37 Hudson Terror Plane was one that I always just thought was so cool with the Art Deco and fender skirts and, and everything that um, it was just a love of mine. And you've got the lines here that we see in the grill. You've got the lines of the, or, or, or excuse me, on the bumper for, uh, Okay, well, uh, give, give us a story on the visor. You said that was an original and it didn't come on the car, but you sought one out. Well, here's how it went. As soon as I got delivery of the car and I stood back and I studied that car, I said, that car has to have a visor it, and, and it's going to make it look real sinister. Well, I was reluctant because it didn't come on the car. Okay. Well, what we find out is back in the 40s and the 50s, there were aftermarket companies and the major one was Fulton. Okay. And so when you saw all those 40s and 50s Pontiacs, Chevys, those were all dealer installed. Okay. So I said, okay, well, good enough. Right. Then to me, it's period, it's it's proper enough. Right, right. And so my friend and I went out to, made two trips to Jefferson, Wisconsin to that massive swap meet. Okay. And we finally found the, the visor for the Hudson. And I didn't feel bad about putting it on because it was correct and it was period correct, but no auto manufacturer ever built the sun visor they were all dealer install options. Okay. Yeah. Now you you drive this car. Oh, you bet yeah. I drive my stuff. So, uh, what kind of looks do you get when you when you're at a stoplight or you pull up by someone at a stoplight? Do you get double and triple takes? People just well, wondering what the and you know the world people that is? and sticking their thumb up and yeah. all this and that. But um, that's why the car hobby is so fun that you meet people and it drags people in. And it's just so much fun. Well, I imagine you get young and old giving you the thumbs up. Little kids just wondering because it's so cool. It's so curvaceous. It's so much chrome. It's so unique. Every time. Now, I told you we lost our mom in 95 to cancer. Okay. But I bought that the Corvette in um, in the early 80s. Okay. And mom went for me or went with me for a ride one day. Okay. And we stopped at a stop sign, a stoplight. And the people in the crosswalk were walking through and they were giving the thumbs up. And my mom looked at me and she said, oh, now I know why. <laughs> Instant celebrity in yeah. any of these. Oh yeah, and, it's, and again, it's so much fun. And for example, you guys, we're fast friends. Yeah. We just met. Yeah, yeah. And we met through Jaguar Gene. Yep. We love Jaguar Gene. Yes, Jean. we do. We love you, Gene. <laughs> we love you, Gene. <laughs> but anyway, um, him and I are fast friends too because he found out about Idle Ridge. Yep. He came up here and he couldn't pry himself away and we were lipping off to each other so good back and forth and we've stayed in touch ever since and thanks to Jaguar Gene, yep. then we got to meet you guys and so we're so excited about the 10,000 lakes Concord, yes, the, Concord. Con the, the Concord Delegates is coming up in July in Excelsior, Minnesota. You're going to have this car here, you're going to have another car here that we're going to do a video on as well. And, and a boat. Be, and a boat. Oh, and the boat too. You guys, you're going to see that video as well. But if you had to pick out one thing on the Terraplane, or I'll give you two of your favorite thing, whether it's the drive or the way you feel in it or the design, what would that be? And what just, what is that? What tugs at your innermost car guy on this vehicle? Well, the first one was, and I think I was born a car guy. Okay. And when I was a little kid, my grandpa had a 50 Dodge. Okay. And he'd take me for rides in it. And I, I thought it smelled funny. Okay. 
And so what I later learned is all the old cars have that kind of a smell. Yep. And now the reason why I'm a purist and the reason why I love the Hudson and many of the other pure cars is, is that if you want a new one, buy a new one. And with me, it's all about the smell. It's all about the grinding the gears. It's all about struggling to stop the car. <laughs> it's all about the biased tires that have you all over the road. Swerve a little bit, yeah. But you know, it's the experience yeah. that is most important to me. And the, 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 it, it's such a visceral awakening of memories. It is. And fond memories throughout your whole life. The smell, the sight, the senses. Uh, and, and now you have such a connection to this, again with Paul Tuttle. With, uh, uh, Orange County Shopping. Hey Paul, you gonna step up or not? <laughs> <laughs> but this is absolutely beautiful 1937 Hudson Terraplane. Uh, Jay Leno, eat your heart out because this baby is beautiful and we've got a great guy, Jim, uh, that really does love his vehicles and he's such a car guy and he has some great stories. Thank you for sharing the Terraplane. One more thing. Yeah, yeah. If Jay Leno ever, ever accidentally peeks in and sees this film. Okay. Jay, you gotta come up to Minnesota and see Idle Ridge. Idle Ridge. All right, thank you so much. Thank you.